everyone. Welcome again. So today's lesson will be on shipwrecks and salvage, the, in, the chemistry option. And in today's lesson and in this series, we'll be looking at how do we protect steel from corrosion. Because remembering that we've looked at ships and alloys, and we've looked at how ships and alloys sort of, uh, how alloys affect our material choice for ships. And, we ne and we've learned about corrosion and how that mechanism affects um, ships and other marine uh, objects, metal objects. And so now we're going to look at how do we actually protect the steel from corrosion and what can we do to avoid having to constantly uh, rebuild these things due to corrosion. Okay, so we're going to look at today protecting steel. So steel is our most widely used construction material, one of our most widely used construction materials. But its corrosion resistance is fairly low. So you can see our harbour bridge, um, it's mostly made out of steel. And it's over the Sydney Harbour, obviously, because it's called the Harbour Bridge. Um, and that harbour is full of salt water. And that salt water can really, really degrade the steel very quickly. So we need to find ways to protect it because its corrosion resistance is quite low. So we have a lot of, so therefore corrosion protection is a really important issue for marine um, applications like this one or ships or other um, marine applications that you might see. So what can we do? What are the actual things that we can do to protect our steel? Well one is paint. So we can just paint the steel. Um, this stops oxygen from reaching the steel because it's covering the, the steel from the oxygen. However, if we damage the paint, rust will form at the scratch. So if we scratch the paint, rust will form there. And so that's what we do with our harbour bridge. We see, uh, we basically paint it um, to protect it from corrosion. Of course, we can plate the steel. So we can plate the steel with tin, uh, and that can help prevent oxidation, obviously, for the same reason as painting it. So we can plate it with another metal. And that adheres a lot better to the steel than paint does. So by plating it with tin, we can protect it, um, protect the steel because it, it sticks to the steel, the tin sticks to the steel much more readily than the, plate, uh, the paint does. But it still suffers the same problem that if you scratch it, it will form, it will rust at the scratch. Um, galvanizing steel is another option. Uh, it's a very, very common um, form of protection. So the steel, is coated with a more reactive metal, which oxidizes preferentially to the steel. So it could be zinc. So the steel is coated with the zinc, and that oxidizes in place of the steel. And an added advantage of this is that if this if the coating is scratched, so if you scratch it and then the steel is now being exposed to the atmosphere, the steel itself won't rust at the scratch. the The galvanizing process actually protects even if the coating is scratched, which makes it very, very useful if you're in sort of a high impact environment or something like that. Uh, another form similar to painting would be plastic coating. So what we can do is we can coat the steel in plastic. Um, it's similar to how a photocopier works. Very fine particles are, so in a photocopier, you sort of, you charge the paper so that where you want it to be black, you charge it, and then these little black balls stick to the charge se sections, and then it melts the um, those black plastic balls, and that's how you get the the photocopying um, action. So in a similar way, what we do is we take the steel and we coat it with these little plastic pellets, and then uh, so we charge the steel electrostatically. We put these little fine black pellet, uh, plastic pellets on there. Then we melt them on. So you melt them onto the, onto the steel. And that forms a very strong film. So it sticks to the steel very well and forms a really strong film. Um, and even some forms of paint can actually passivate the iron. So some forms of paint can actually be painted on to passivate the iron as well. So we looked at passivation in one of our previous lessons. And um, some, some paints can actually passivate steel. One such example is potassium chromate. Um, it oxidizes iron on the surface, creating a very impervious outer layer, which is good for the steel. Okay. 
Now in terms of protecting ships, that was protecting steel in general, but in ships we can use other methods, two, one, two methods that haven't been uh, mentioned yet, but it's, we have to protect the steel in ships because they're exposed to harsh environments like seawater. So outside of what we already said, there are two other main methods that we can use. And one is called surface alloys. So we can use these surface alloys to protect the hulls. So what we do is we take the steel, we bombard it with high energy chromium ions. And what happens is it forms a sort of stainless steel alloy um, on the outer surface of the hull, which makes the outer surface basically a stainless steel. So we don't have to have the full stainless steel, we just have to have the outer layer as a stainless steel. And also polymer paints have been used to great effect as well. So Rustmaster Pro is an example of this. It forms an impervious layer and also causes the atoms of the steel to form an ionic compound called pyroaurite, and so that helps to protect the steel. So it adds just more surface protection to the steel. Okay. So these are some very typical ways of protecting steel. We've looked at paint, um, plating, galvanizing, passivating paints, um, and also these ship specific ones like surface alloys. And so hopefully these are all kind of common sense to you um, and you can see how they work. So we'll move on to the question segment. Which of the following is not a common method of protecting steel from rusting? So we've got painting, coating with silver, passivating, or galvanizing. And because iron's a pretty low cost metal, I'd say we probably don't want to coat it with silver. So it's probably B, and there's our answer. Which of the following methods for protecting steel from rusting is different from the others? So covering the iron with vitreous enamel, so just some kind of enamel. Coating the steel with plastic, painting the iron object, or galvanizing the iron. So what is, which one's different? Well, it's D, galvanizing, because all of these three don't protect the steel if the outer coating is damaged, whereas galvanizing actually protects the steel if the outer coating is damaged as well. So D is the only different one there. So galvanizing steel allows for protection to occur despite scratches or imperfections. Why is this so? Well, the zinc coating in galvanization is used as a sacrificial metal. So the zinc oxidizes due to this equation, right? So zinc solid turns into zinc ion plus two electrons. Now these electrons flow to the steel, so they flow from the coating. So if this is our coating, this is our coating, and then this is our steel. When this oxidizes, the zinc, oxidizes, electrons start collecting on the steel, okay? The electrons start collecting on top of the steel, or on the steel, and that makes the steel an, a cathode, meaning it can't oxidize and corrode, okay? And this is the basis of cathodic protection, which is what we're going to look at in the next lesson. So why is rust prevention in ships a more serious problem than for motor cars, machinery buildings, and domestic appliances? Ships are exposed to many, to much harsher environments than any other device. So the seawater is just really corrosive. And additionally, the ships are submerged in a strong electrolyte, which can accelerate the rusting process. If you think about your car, you would rarely see your car submerged in a really strong electrolyte like seawater. And if it was, I'd be very worried. So by having this giant metal object sitting in an electrolyte, you're just asking for corrosion. That's why it's much more important to protect the steel in a ship than it is, say, for a car. Okay. Now, some people have claimed that a badly applied coat of paint is worse than no paint at all, and explain what, this is, what is meant by this. So, some people say that if you don't apply the paint properly, you might as well just not have it. It's better, it's worse than not having paint at all. And so, why would they say this? So, badly applied paint can appear to protect the metal. However, oxygen may have gotten underneath and is secretly corroding the metal below. Okay, so you might have put your paint on badly, and there's oxygen corroding the steel underneath the paint. However, because the paint is there, on the surface everything looks normal. 
Without the paint, the corrosion would be obvious and could be rectified. However, the badly applied paint obscures the problem. So the paint actually would just cover up the problem and you could have a failing um, metal object waiting to collapse anytime soon. Okay? So that's what the, the, the big issue with is. So you have to paint things well, otherwise don't paint them at all. Okay? So that concludes today's lesson on protecting steel. We looked at the various protection mechanisms and how they work. And so hopefully you've learned something about how to keep your steel from corroding in a marine environment. So I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson. Thank you.